My name is John McKeon. I'm the moderator for the Terra Data River. And today we have with us James Semenak as part of our e-commerce series. This today actually is a special piece on attribution, something that has perplexed many people because, in fact, it is a very complex subject. And right now, most approaches are simplistic, relatively speaking. James, welcome back. Thank you, John. James, this attribution is many times just a last click attribution, but when you really look at the complexity, both horizontally and vertically of attribution, it is much more involved. Can you give us the basis of why it is such a difficult challenge to truly capture attribution? Sure, John. Yeah, you're right. Last click is a standard that we've used for many years. It's been around and it's been the staple of measuring ROI for marketing organizations, but it's just not cutting it anymore. There are problems with double counting, problem with the way I say it is many marketing organizations don't really use the data to make decisions because if I actually truly made the decisions on my marketing spend or my marketing campaign based on last click attribution, I'd get rid of 95% of my campaign. And we all know that that's not a good decision to make. And so the question that the marketing organizations are looking at is, how can I get better at ROI attribution and get better decisioning from that kind of data? So, James, but if if we look at this, what, what are the basic campaign attributions right now and the ROI components as, as most people are approaching it today? Well, first of all, it's about the last click, the last thing I see, and then associating some transaction value to it or some other value associated with the conversion. And so that's kind of where people are going today. But what we end up seeing is that there are a lot of campaigns going out, a lot of display ads, a lot of search spend that's happening, and we're not seeing the interrelationships or the influences on search campaign on display and vice versa. And what people are trying to discern is, you know, how do I get insight into the influence that these campaigns have on each other, these different channels have on each other? Relative to that, because last click is not cutting it anymore, there are a lot of companies out there that have created attribution algorithms that are a bit more sophisticated, do kind of get you on the path, but my position is there's no silver bullet attribution. Somebody who creates an algorithm that may address part of it certainly won't be able to address the needs of any specific company for all cases of attribution. And it gets more complex in the sense that it's really about a data problem, right? Getting the data right. Some of the issues I have around uh, attribution is uh, I have customers that interact with me in my marketing campaigns across many channels. And mobile, obviously, is a hugely, fastly growing one. The ability to tie all those users across those channels is important, even in in an anonymous way. And the other problem companies have is if I get every ad a customer sees, that's impression level data, the volume of that just explodes. So if you think about it, if my click-through rate is 5%, that means I have to get the other 95% of the uh, impressions that are out there, which is orders of magnitude, magnitude, or it can be orders of magnitude um, or volume of data. And the other component of this is getting a time series view of it. I want to be able to see what ads were seen, when, by which customers. If I can line that up, then I can begin to look at the influence that these campaigns have had on the objectives I'm trying to meet in marketing. Well, James, one of the big complexities of this is actually the ROI calculation because Profit is complex. Costs are complex. How do we deal with the complexity of actually calculating the ROI? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, we all know the basic ROI metric. It's revenue or sales or profit minus the cost of the campaign divided by the cost of the campaign. But certainly the first problem face of that is, so what is the profit side or the sales side or the, the, the value side of that? And certainly the count of a transaction, and companies do this, I think, do this thing pretty well. You know, the value of a transaction in of itself, I can know that pretty easily the way it's tracked. But people are beginning more and more to say, 
what's the lifetime value of this customer? Or let me look over the last three to six months of their activity and use that as input into the ROI calculation. There, and certainly we all know the cases where I can acquire a customer, so that's a good conversion event. But the fact is that customer doesn't do many transactions, so they're not that very valuable. So that's one dimension that we ultimately want to beef up to improve the ROI metric. The other dimension are the campaigns themselves. The two ways I look at this, and that adds to the complexity of this, is I want to know the cost of all the campaigns seen prior to the conversion event. So not just the last click again, it's the cost of every one of those campaigns. Even more complex is ultimately I want to have some waiting scheme for every impression to then say the cost plus that weight is the influence that the campaign has had on the conversion. That's where the complexity in this whole attribution. The other side of this, for every campaign I send out, I do want to look at the influence the campaign had on the conversion. So what I mean by that is every time I send a campaign or an ad or an email, right, I expect the customer to do something. And the vast majority of the time they don't, but many times they go down the path of certain amount and then abandon. But I want to be able to capture that because that gives me a better perspective on that campaign's influence on the actual conversion, even though it didn't cause conversion. So the simplistic next step is I go from last click to looking at every impression, which is great. And then once I do that, I want to be able to look for every impression for those that had a click through, how far in the flow did the campaign actually get me? Okay, well, James, what are the basic attributes or aspects of attribution? So when I think of building something to create an attribution system, I need to know what this definition of a successful conversion is. And it can be a transaction, it can be a download, it can be anything. You know, whatever objective marketing has is the definition of conversion. We have to define the, a successful conversion because once we do that, essentially what we want to do is to then look at that last successful conversion. And then if you think of it back up, let's say days or weeks prior to that and look at everything a customer saw months after that and then look at all the interactions or transactions that they had with the customer. We want to know the level of interaction or I call the depth of flow for every campaign. How far into the marketing objective. And the nice thing about online is when we build campaigns, what we do is we have them click, they hit a landing page, they go through a set of pages, they get them towards the conversion. So we can look at it in terms of depth of flow. Again, every message seen is something that we need to look at for attribution. And then after the fact, right? What's the value of the customer? And usually the after the fact part is most companies have a good handle or a good start on defining what that is. James, those are the basic aspects of attribution, but really what we're looking at is a complex journey, a complex process, a buying process, if you will, where the consumer and the business is interacting in many different levels, many different complexities. How do we understand that and manage that? When I think of this in a holistic sense, to your point is, Ultimately, all of our actions are driving customers to do something. And we usually define that around the construct of a buy funnel. In a buy funnel, if you look at the graphic, the left side is demand generation. This is where primarily we're talking about right now is this left demand generation piece, which says whether it's buying search or I'm sending emails or I'm doing mobile advertising or I'm doing reach advertising out in ad networks, I'm using all of those channels to drive demand and in this case, to my website. Once I do that, then you know I have more control and, and I guide customers to places where I hope they would put something in a shopping cart or download some or do some transaction. And then once they put in the shopping cart, do the transaction, then I have opportunities to follow up with them after that. I can do a customer survey. Uh, they may engage with my customer services. So there's that whole customer experience across the buy funnel and beyond that ultimately companies want to look at. If you look at the bottom part of that, that colorful line there, what I've started doing is mapping across every part of the buy funnel what type of data that is available 
in this case, what I did was look at the gaps in the data. So kind of the green says we have this data uh, solid. The yellow says you know, we have some of this data, but we don't have a full picture of it. And red says we don't have any of this at all. And what that helps is then when you're looking at building infrastructures for attribution modeling, in this case, they were saying, well, here's the gaps we have in our data to be able to do that. And in this case, there were two gaps primarily are that we needed every impression that was served wherever they were served. And secondly, which is a huge issue, is mapping cookies across these channels, right? So different applications, different servers, different environments, platforms, and Somehow to be able to do this, I have to be able to map those users anonymously or according to privacy profiles across those those various channels. James, you've got a great graphic here that talks about the thread, and the thread is really where you're going way beyond last click into some of the great detail like time of day and all the other attributes will add into the behavioral analysis and tracking this by funnel. Tell me about the thread. So I came up with a concept of a thread because ultimately when I sat down and after years and years of talking to business and marketing and stuff, ultimately the nirvana state is to have every interaction a customer has with a company recorded someplace and then ultimately lined up in a time series. So the concept is every customer that a company has has a interaction thread associated with it. And the interesting thing about this is a lot of it we build today without thinking of it in terms of a continuous customer experience. You know, we have transaction data. We know, in fact, we send emails out. Many people look at customer services interactions. But historically, they've been, I call them kind of verticalized, dip by different business units. But ultimately, that's what we want to do is create a thread for every customer that has every interaction on it. And once we do that, my premise is the business analysts once they get that in a format that's digestible, they can do an incredible amount of analysis on it and insight. I can look for a pattern like you should see here. You know, the colors kind of represent patterns of interaction that led to some conversion events in this case. Then what I want to do is begin to mine those patterns and look across all of my customer base and then begin to pull out these patterns to then make decisions again. James, what about conversion? How do we track the true issues and the true dynamics around conversion over time? If we haven't made it complex enough already for people, (laughs) just building that thread. The other aspect of that thread is that while I may capture an impression, I also want to capture the dimensional data around the ad impression itself. And so there are people who believe, and I do also that, the characteristics of the ad itself have a kind of influence on the conversion or the influence on moving the customer towards the objective I want them to. So instead of just looking at the fact that I had this impression at this date for this customer, once I get that, then the other thing I want to be able to do is then look at the characteristics of those ads. So how many times the customer saw it? What was the size of the ad? Was it a rich media ad? Was it a video ad? All of those people would argue, are pieces of data that help you look at the influence that the ad had. So once I can lay this data out in the thread, I can grab all of those ticks, for example, that had ad impressions next to them, and then drill in and pull out the dimensional characteristics of those ads, and then, again, looking at correlation and kind of regression analysis, look at the association and the influence those ads had on the customer's movement towards the conversion. Well, James, with all of this, it is a process, and not only a process, but actually a sequence. So how do we actually understand the critical steps of this sequence and how they interrelate? So we've talked about two or three different aspects of attribution. Another part of attribution is we all know that it takes many interactions with a customer before they actually do the conversion. And kind of this attribution scenario where we have three sequences here is an explanation of that. And somehow we want to score that because we want to score every ad that was sent out to a customer. And then the way I explain it is this. If you look at this diagram, I say, The first sequence in this scenario was I sent an email campaign to a customer. They clicked on the offer. They hit a landing page. 
then they began to browse the site. They didn't necessarily move down the conversion.